Hi right, everyone, welcome to our lesson. Uh, this is uh, to talk about um, industry spread. So we're going to take a look at how industry uh, spread around the world um, from Great Britain and places like that. So our objectives and standards to explain industrialization in the United States and analyze the growth and spread of industry across Europe and the world. And take a moment to read over the standards as well. <coughs> And then our desired result, uh, so the question you'll be responding to at the end there, uh, how did industry spread around the world? So what are some things that happened that led to uh, the spread of in uh, industrialization around the world? So industry comes to the United States. So the United States also had the same uh, resources required for uh, industrialization. Remember we talked about with Great Britain, they had land, labor, and wealth. So the United States... Um, has kind of the same elements that are going to allow for the growth and beginning of industrialization here as well. Uh, one of the things is the country needed to learn to create its own goods during the War of 1812, because if you maybe remember something from U.S. history, that uh, we went to war against Great Britain uh, again for a second time, the War of 1812, and so we were unable to use their industry, obviously, so we had to learn to kind of create our own goods uh, to support our own war effort and our own people. So just like Great Britain, the textile industry started the revolution in the United States as well. Um, and this was because the Great Britain would not allow um, those key people who were important to industrialization to leave the country. These people were people like engineers, mechanics, toolmakers who had made machines, who had made new inventions uh, in Great Britain uh, that allowed for industrialization. And uh, Great Britain would not allow those people to leave the country. Now, Samuel Slater came to the United States in 1789, and he brought with him designs uh, for a spinning mill from Great Britain. Uh, Moses Brown will open the first factory in the U.S. with Slater's machine. So Lowell uh, in Massachusetts will transform industry. So Francis Cabot Lowell um, and others helped change the textile industry in Massachusetts. Now what they did is they used machines for every part of cloth manufacturing and they actually opened uh, other centers in towns, little factories, one of which was named for um, Francis Cabot Lowell after his death. And people, um, mostly women, uh, came to Lowell uh, and it became an example <coughs> of manufacturing uh, for the world and it provided opportunities uh, for women to work as well. Women could also have independence because they would live at these centers, these factory centers, and they made higher wages. So um, it was a key start to industry in the United States. Industry will continue to grow in the United States after the Civil War. Uh, new inventions and new um, increase in city populations allowed for industrialization too. Remember that new inventions and increase in populations allows for industrialization to spread as well. Now, railroads, uh, just like we talked about how transportation uh, allows for industrialization as well, changed in the United States as well, and railroads, railroads, excuse me, will allow for industry to expand and grow across the country as well. So by the late 1800s, industry was on the rise. Now stocks will grow corporations. So large businesses need large amounts of money to be successful. So to achieve this goal, entrepreneurs sold stocks or rights of ownership. Um, these people then became part of a corporation. Now a corporation, and again, I'm just going to circle these words here because these are some of our vocab words again uh, for this unit, just so you're seeing them where they're popping up in the lessons. Um, so a corporation, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, a corporation and, um, which I'm going to erase that real quick, there we go. So a corporation and stocks are part of vocab. Just circle them again, I'm, my apologies. So these people became part of a corporation, which is a business with stockholders who share in the profits or the kind of success of the company, but they're not responsible for uh, the debts of the company. Um, 
so we'll begin to see a rise in corporations and two maybe names you might remember again from past history courses or from elsewhere are um, Andrew Carnegie, very famous industrialist in the United States, and also John uh, D. Rockefeller. So both of these men are going to come uh, to large amounts of power and wealth uh, in terms of uh, the age of industry. So Europe will also begin to industrialize. So besides Great Britain and the United States, other countries will begin to industrialize as well. But some were slower than others to industrialize. The first European country to follow in Great Britain's industrial ways was Belgium. Um, and William Cockerell uh, was a carpenter from Britain who had helped Belgium industrialize with plans of a spinning mill and other engineers uh, from Great Britain. And Europe uh, will expand industry uh, still too. Uh, Germany will land, uh, sorry, Germany learned uh, to industrialize from British equipment and engineers. And they also sent their children to school in England to learn about industrial management. So how to be factory owners, how to run a factory, how to be a good business manager. Places such as Bohemia, Italy, France, and Russia uh, also picked up on industry, industry excuse me, uh, fairly easily. easily. But um, other places such as Austria and Hungary uh, and Spain will struggle with industry and they'll begin to see uh, some struggles there as well. All right, so please try your best on the questions that follow. Um, let me know if you have any questions or concerns and I'll hopefully talk to you guys soon. So how does industry impact the world? Well, industry created a bigger gap between wealthy countries and poor countries, okay? Wealthier countries, and we're going to see this in the next couple of weeks, are going to use poorer countries for their resources and other things, okay? And this is going to lead to something called imperialism. Um, and maybe you've heard of that before, again, I'm not quite sure, but this is going to lead to the next type of topic we're going to talk about uh, in class as well. However, industrialization wasn't always bad. It also helped improve certain aspects of people and their lives.